Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. Here kicking off this week with a recruiting update because we didn't bring it to you uh, well, at any point last week. We had other stuff going on. And uh, last week, maybe not as much in the recruiting world to talk about, but this is shaping up to possibly be a pretty busy uh, end to July, start of August this week for K-State. Uh, and it starts with the news of Logan Bartley decommitting from Wake Forest uh, earlier today. Uh, what does that mean for the Wildcats, Drew? Uh, I think that it means that there is likely some good news coming K-State's way, if I was to take a guess. Uh, so Logan Bartley visited K-State July 25th, uh, coincided with uh, the last K-State camp of the summer. Uh, although he didn't compete, but he was there uh, with his parents, just kind of hanging out and watching the camp and hanging out with some of the K-State uh, support staff. Obviously, he was with Joe Klanderman a little bit, uh, but it was kind of like a uh, kind of snuck him in on a visit. And then it looked like it was going to be a little quiet on that front. Uh, and then decommits from Wake Forest. And you'd have to think that K-State's in the driver's seat. I mean, he was just in Manhattan and seemed to be really enjoying it. And K-State's been making a really big push because I, I think that's something that kind of hasn't been discussed much when talking about Logan Bartley is I you kind of wonder what his commitment or what his recruitment would have looked like uh, if he hadn't committed to Wake Forest so early because he committed to Wake Forest in January. So to make up that much ground that K-State has to get him to decommit and visit and probably be in the driver's seat, I think is very impressive and something that really shouldn't go unnoticed because that, that's a long time to be committed to one school. And in three weeks' time, K-State has came in and really shook things up. Well, and so with Bartley, the notable thing here is safety. And we know that K-State's safety recruiting hit this weird little stretch where things were looking really good for a time period. And then all of a sudden it just kind of tanked for many different reasons for different guys. Some dudes decided to go elsewhere and K-State was, you know, on the, the cutting room floor with those decisions or other guys maybe had other things going on in K-State, put them on the back burner. Uh, so with this, I mean, how big of a get would this be if Bartley does indeed flip his commitment to K-State? I think that it's a big deal. And again, it I hate this kind of the perception of it, but to flip another power four commit uh, and then flipping somebody from an ACC school, I think shouldn't go unnoticed. And like you said, the, the safety recruiting was kind of up and down, but you like where the class is going to end up with the three commits of RJ Collins, Dominic Mitchell, and if Logan Bartley comes to fruition. Uh, because there's there's a lot of potential with uh, Mitchell and with Collins. And then Bartley is another guy that you can, he's a little bit of a Swiss army knife and could do a little bit of everything at the safety position. And was a wanted man in the power four world. So I, I think that that's something to really kind of admire and take into account. And it's something that, again, I've said this with a few different recruitments, that this is, kind of how far along K-State has came uh, under Chris Kleiman and recruiting and the recruiting world where that the, the Logan Bartley situation is kind of just like a, Oh, like this is nice where probably three, four years ago, this would be like a big, a big deal. And like one of K-State's best commits of the entire class. And now he's going to be probably that third or fourth rated commit in the class. And it's going to be kind of like a, a ho-hum, like, of course, K-State's flipping somebody from Wake Forest. Like, look at Wake Forest and look at where K-State is. So I, I think that that's also something that needs to be really appreciated of how far along that they've came. All right, on the topic of defensive flips, there's another one out there that uh, K-State, the, the offer was publicized this morning. Dior Garner, a Canton, Ohio native, defensive lineman, uh, what is your read on this situation for the Wildcats? Yeah, defensive tackle. We've talked about, I don't know how many times, but it seems like a lot. Where it, it, Defensive <laughs> tackle. I mean, the, the saying, can he play tackle, still rings true. It's just we're talking the defensive yeah. side of the ball now. 
Yeah, defensive tackle is a major, major need for K-State at the high school level. And I also wouldn't be surprised if they go to the portal and find a defensive tackle later on uh, in December, January. But not getting a defensive tackle at the high school level last class has made that such a need. And missing out on Jackson Blackwell and then missing out on Micah Hotch from South Dakota has really kind of thrown a wrench into defensive tackle recruiting. And then along comes Dior Gardner, who K-State has uh, discovered and then offered uh, and is a Bowling Green commit, but just because he's a Bowling Green commit doesn't mean that he doesn't have Power 4 interest, and there's been a handful of Power 4 schools involved with him. Uh, but I, I think that K-State's in a really good spot right now. Uh, you would like to schedule an official visit for Garner probably sooner than later uh, because of the other Power 4 schools that are kind of circling. But they're, they're in a good spot, and I think that that's one to really know about and i know that d tackle recruiting is something that has been really talked about on the boards recently of what where does k-state go from from here after losing out on hotch and i think that this is where you see k-state really pivot and turn a lot of attention to okay so we, we've talked about two flips going on and who knows when those could happen if they do indeed come to fruition for k-state but it would seem like something that could happen in the immediate future um, because Bartley already announced his decommitment from Wake Forest, and a very eagle-eyed Drew Galloway already noticed that Garner took Bowling Green out of his bio on Twitter. Uh, let's move forward then with some other notable happenings in the recruiting space this week, because there are going to be visitors coming uh, in the middle part of the week. Uh, what can you tell people about what that looks like for K-State? Uh, so I think that uh, visit wise, it'll be on Wednesday. I believe it's the team barbecue, kind of like the the kickoff of fall camp, if you will, uh, where a lot of commits will be in town. Uh, a few 2026 pro prospects will also be in town. Uh, Tyron Parker from Shawnee Heights High School in Topeka is one of those. Uh, another notable uh, recruiting item right now that kind of I've talked about it a little bit, but it's something that really needs to kind of come to light a little bit more is uh, Darian Whitaker from Nebraska. So we, we've seen a power four potential flip, a G5 potential flip, and Darian Whitaker is a potential FCS flip from uh, Northern Iowa to K-State. And he was somebody that I had noticed at uh, the last camp, uh, that uh, July 25th camp, and was somebody that I noticed and was like, hmm, this guy's really, really good but plays linebacker, like what does K-State do after already having four guys at that spot? Uh, because he's 6'4", 215, moves super, super well. And, and I've seen some people kind of say that he reminds them of Khalid Duke, but he's more Asa Newsome-esque than I think people really realize uh, because I think that some of that stigma was the FCS commit, and you don't want to kind of hype him up that much, but he... Moves a lot like Asa Newsom and looked a lot like Asa Newsom out there uh, at the camp that Asa Newsom was at uh, before his junior season. So I think that that was somebody that I considered a, a potential steal for Northern Iowa now to see K-State offer. And Whitaker already has two visits to K-State scheduled. So I would imagine that, that one is something that could get wrapped up pretty quickly as well. Okay, so that's uh, kind of everything going on K-State-wise. Do you have anything else that you need to throw in there to keep the people in the loop about or uh, other things that they, they, they're just going to have to wait and see on? Uh, I would say that they're, the 2026 class, I know that, that seems so far away right now, but the, there's even having they've even had visits uh, from the 2026 class right now in the month of July during this uh, open period. Uh, one of them is a major, major defensive end uh, prospect, Anthony Kennedy from Arkansas, who is a four-star who also uh, was at K-State July 25th and was there and was just there hanging out during the camp. And he was that guy that I actually kind of looked at and was like, hmm, I wonder who that is, and then figured out who it was. And I was like, oh, because he he's a, a big dude. He does not look like a about to be junior in high school. Uh, and then another one in the 2026 class to really know about um, is 
uh, at safety from Christian Brothers High School. Uh, and I am pulling up the, the link now because I can't get anything to load. Oh, the uh, Christian Brothers, I can, you know, I can tell you about them uh, and their, their soccer program. Yes. Oh, even football. They're wild. Uh, Nick McClellan, uh, safety from Christian Brothers, uh, was on campus a few days ago as well. And he's a major 2026 target. So even though 2026 seems far away, it hasn't stopped K-State from getting big-time prospects in on visits and getting guys that they're really prioritizing to come to campus. So I think that we'll see kind of more of a focus on that because, like I've said, K-State's sitting at 15 2025 commits already, so they can really shift their focus on a lot of positions to the 2026 class. Yeah, and this is not to be confused with uh, former cat kicker Nick McClellan. Uh, just, yeah, yeah so... Yeah, nobody nobody uh, has found extra eligibility for him. Uh, in no, it, it is not. It is not Nick's boy. No, not not Nick's boy. Okay, uh, last thing here. This is non K State related recruiting, but uh, I'll I'll give you the chance to to give your thoughts on it. Uh, level of shock or no surprise to you <laughs> that Desan Brame flipped his commitment from Oregon to Tennessee, the uh, Derby tight end. Uh, honestly, not a ton of surprise for me uh, because I would kind of heard leading up to his commitment to Oregon that Tennessee was making a late push, uh, and then Oregon ends up securing the deal. And how that how that kind of went about uh, is more of a behind closed doors thing. Of I, I imagine that there was a little bit of a bidding war going on between Tennessee and Oregon. Uh, the one surprising thing to me. And I mean, we we kind of talked about that in uh, our KSO chat was kind of how quickly it happened was more of a surprise uh, because his girlfriend is going to Tennessee to play soccer as well. But I, I think that you would have expected that to be like a fall flip instead of committing and announcing a commitment date like last month and then not even a full month later flipping to Tennessee. But I'm not super surprised, and Brame's a very, very good player and will probably be insane in Josh Heupel's offense and how they incorporate tight ends. Yeah, I mean, if it's, I think it's it's funny thinking back on it, but uh, the game that I went and saw him last year, uh, he was wearing his Tennessee gloves during that game, so a little bit of uh, foreboding Fortran. experience there. Yeah, uh, Yeah, that's just kind of interesting, and I wanted to throw that in there to once again – uh, take a little shot at the at the Quackers up in Eugene, Ooh, uh, but because they, that, of that, oh for three on tight ends for Oregon as well. Yeah, because of that, I mean, just so people are uh, again aware, zero concern about Lincoln Cure's commitment to K State. Yeah, z- zero concern. Like I, I imagine that Oregon probably won't give up, but I, I think that they probably should. Yeah. Well, I, their <laughs> fans. Uh, if you if you go read our uh, sister site Scoop Duck, they uh, that that's one that's not over till December. Uh, <laughs> it must be nice being uh, in an arrogant big time program like that, where you can just assume, yeah, no, no, we still got a chance with everybody. Uh, like Drew said, I don't believe they do still have a chance in that one. So K State fans should still feel good about that, and should feel good that you still have your big time tight end from the state of Kansas. Cause you know, there are a lot of programs out there that don't. And this recruiting cycle, you're not on the wrong end of a flip of a commit from Derby. So well, you, you got Oregon, to be bystanders in that one. Oregon fans should be more concerned. I think right now about keeping their guys than flipping other guys. Cause they, yeah, it does seem like they're struggling a, a little bit. They've, they've lost quite a few and are about to lose another one. So I think that they should be more concerned about keeping their own than flipping others. Yeah. All right. Well, that is, uh, that's some, that's some fun news there at the end. In addition to the fun news to start off with, uh, K state is killing it in recruiting and other schools that had fans preying on K state's downfall are also starting to struggle in recruiting. So a whole lot of fun going on there. And if you want more on recruiting news for K-State, head over to kstateonline.com. You can find us at on three. A lot of good stuff going over there. DY just had his recruiting scoop today. Plenty of other things to kind of get you through the week and plenty more coming because we're going to get our first look at K-State football this week. A little practice time, 
uh, on Thursday that we'll get a look at seeing. So we'll tell you what we see there when it comes your way. And tomorrow, Drew and I will be back, and we're going to have – maybe we'll get D.Y. involved in this too. But I've got a question for you guys, and I'll, I'll give you the prompt ahead of time. We will talk about the talent on Chris Kleiman rosters at K-State. So you're, you're going to be able to quantify it in a couple different ways, however you see fit. But how does this 2024 K-State team compare – to the five previous teams Chris Kleiman has had at K-State. We will talk about that tomorrow right here on the KSO Show. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online, and we will talk to you again sometime Tuesday afternoon.